was in the middle of the third grade in an arts and crafts class, right? And it was close to Christmas and we were making Christmas ornaments. And we were using a lot of glue, a lot of wooden sticks, and a lot of glitter. By the time the class was almost over, I looked around and I saw a whole bunch of supplies just lying all over the floor. Without thinking of it twice, I went ahead and I repackaged all of the wooden sticks, consolidated the bottles of glue into single bottles of glue, and I collected all the glitter and put it in new bags of unused glitter. I went home with my Christmas ornament, and I'm pretty sure my mom thought I stole that Christmas ornament because I had even more supplies that I had to begin with. And at that time, without really realizing, I was recognizing value where other people saw trash. And that's as far as I can remember, it was the first time I did that. And if you really think about it, every time you recognize something that other people deemed as undesirable and you use it again, you guys are recycling. Now, I'm in the recycling industry. I've been in the industry for over eight years now. But I don't think you have to be in the recycling industry in order to recognize that value. You see, it's all about keeping your eyes open, paying attention, and thinking outside the cardboard box. Get it? Is that a recycling joke? <laughs> it's much funnier in my head. <laughs> Essentially, when we recognize value, we're creating even more value. And regardless of the industry you're in, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. There's probably uh, a lot of you that may have in your house or in your office an old computer or an old laptop collecting dust that you have it because you think that you might use it sometime in the near future. Well, guess what? That's not going to happen. It's going to sit there for a while, and the way it is right now, it's undesirable. It's just trash, piece of junk. Well, that computer can become an instrument of education for a kid across the world that probably has never seen a computer in their lives. Now, that's a perfect example. You see, it's all about community-driven entrepreneurship. It's about recognizing something and then creating value upon that. What if I could share you a simple idea that could create value for small and large businesses, create value for business owners to help them improve their companies and also make an impact with the people around that company. I'm talking about the community with community-driven entrepreneurship. I'm going to take you to a little, little journey about 20 years ago when this thing called internet hit the mainstream, right? I was probably about eight years old. And if you think about it, 20 years ago, it's uh, one generation, right? Millennials. In fact, some millennials were already teenagers when the internet hit the mainstream. So when you put it in perspective, it's not that long ago. Now. Right now, we're going through the information revolution, which is the industrial revolution of our time. Arguably, in the entire history of humankind, there has been something so disruptive as technology the way it is today. I think that's pretty huge. And it's only logical that this enormous impact will affect virtually every single type of industry as we know it create a whole bunch of industries that didn't even exist only a few years ago. Internet made possible the evolution of technology. With the evolution of technology, high-tech devices like smartphones or tablets came into our everyday life, and now we're more connected than we have ever been in the history of humankind. With that, something called social media came. And in our society now, we're constantly judging who we're doing business with. The thing is that we're doing it more who, by who they are as a person rather than their credentials. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. There's not a person here in this room that hasn't purchased a product or a service from somebody else, not because probably was the best one 
or because it had the highest ratings, or maybe because it had the lowest cost. You purchase that product of service because you connected with that person, because you like that person. Maybe you connected with that company at a personal level. You see, things like social media right now are giving us an inside look into people's lives that we value far more than we do their credentials sometimes. And right now, we're paying more attention to the people that we're doing business with and maybe we're thinking more about whether they are you know, vegetarian or meat eaters, whether they have kids or not, whether they are Christians or Muslims, whether they like the bulls or the gators more than anything else, more than their degrees are or their GPA was. You know, we're still doing business the way we did a long time ago, yet we haven't adapted. We're still, still doing business the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way is the, it's doing business based upon what we know, or what we think we know, instead of who we are. And the reality is that people don't really care about what you know. They care about who you are. One of the biggest challenges that business owners, CEO, and C-level managers have right now is how to recognize value and how to create value for their company in a way that will help them stay ahead of the curve, grow their market share, retain clients, and increase their market share pretty much. So how do companies differentiate? How do they stay ahead? How do they connect with clients at a deeper level? and create more value on the meantime. You see, innovation is not only about technology. Innovation is about implementing new ideas to solve problems that we have right now. And I believe one of the best ways to create value for organizations is to strategically craft a plan about collaboration, social entrepreneurship, cost-based marketing strategies, and corporate social responsibilities. It's about measuring the success of the organization based upon financial reports, but also based upon the impact that the company is making in their community. It's about being proactive about the social problems that we're facing as a society instead of being reactive to our just profit and loss statement. But in order to achieve this, we must understand the purpose of the company. We have to take a, an insightful look inside ourselves and inside our company, look at our values, look at our core, understand the mission and understand our vision, connect the dots by looking at the past, and by connecting the dots, we'll be able to identify everything that happened that made us who we are right now. This will translate into better understanding and purpose of who we are. And probably by doing that, we'll be able to pinpoint specific cases or situations that made our life change and gave our life meaning or purpose. After that insightful look, we may realize that there's something that we stand for. It might be a specific cause that we care about. It might be something that we want to change. It can be cancer research. It can be helping people in need. It can be feeding the homeless. It can be education, STEM, empowering girls. It can be anything you want. But there has to be something that motivate you to the, to the point of helping you become who you are right now. And after we recognize that, and after we recognize that cause that supports that specific problem that we care about, then we have to commit. The main purpose, the main goal is to create a culture around solving a problem the community is facing right now. That's done with commitment and by going the extra mile in crafting a strategy inside of the business operation. So we have to put it into our business plan. Right after that, we have to go and create a very strong community grassroots effort. You know that there are more than 1.5 million charities and nonprofits registered in the US. But here in our backyard, there are hundreds of amazing causes local-based causes that probably have been around for ages struggling for support, or maybe they're a new initiative that could become something huge if they get the right support from the community behind them. Trying to save the world is a very novel cause, something that I try to do too. 
but it's very hard to do if you don't even start with your own community. Then we need to get involved. So we've been following all the steps. We recognize what we want to support. Getting involved is not just writing a check at the end of the year or at the end of the month. This is not about doing 20 hours of community service every month, although that's fantastic. But it's about making a difference. And sometimes the best way to make a difference is about getting involved from within. You've ever heard that phrase, right? Change happens from within. So we have to get inside of those causes and really, really commit. It's about integrating a culture throughout the entire organization and even our employees. After that, we need to collaborate and create partnerships. We're in the collaboration economy, like a good friend of mine, Topher Morrison, wrote a book about. Entrepreneurship tends to be a lonely road. We're creating a business model, and we're also trying to solve a social problem. That's kind of hard. But it doesn't have to be a lonely road. There are plenty of companies and organizations around there that might have products or services that complement with your offering. Or there are maybe companies or people that just support the same costs that you're supporting. So these organizations whose products and services align and complement each other, there's definitely strength in numbers and in staying together. Ultimately, and this is what we want to get, is to create a self-sustainable model. I believe there's a sweet spot where profitability meets altruism where businesses can be forged for good and solve a social problem that the community is facing. It happens a lot. It's proven. It's a proven method. So I'm going to leave you with this final thought. Are we ready to build that bridge between being a business leader and also being a community leader? Are we ready to make an impact in our community through our business and our influence? So. Let's go ahead and start with that old dusty laptop that we have in our closet. Because there's somewhere around the world a kid that could be the next Bill Gates and is waiting to be discovered. And that computer that you have there could be the catalyst to making that huge impact in their life. So let's go out. Let's change the world together. And I think that's an idea worth spreading. Thank you. Thank you.